how to fix Starlink's network issues using a failover router. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again for joining me. For tea time today, we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're gonna be talking Starlink. I've gotten this question a lot. And the question is, how do I maintain a 100% uptime when using Starlink? Even though we know Starlink has been having problems as of late, whereas we're having slowdowns of speeds and some spottiness happening, well, there's really no way to fix their service. The idea here is to not fix their service, but to have a secondary service that will automatically come to your rescue if there is even a slight outage. And that's what I ended up doing. How we do this is simply by using a failover router. Now, what I did is I tested a couple for you guys, so you don't have to test them. My thought was to be able to do a failover, I currently have Starlink as a primary, but I also have AT&T Uverse, which is junk, but it's still a ground service. So it is a little bit more solid, let's say, even though it's a lot slower, it is still solid. So my idea was have Starlink as a primary, and if something goes south for a second, two seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, an hour, whatever, the AT&T U-verse will come to the rescue and I won't have to do it. I won't have to make the changes. It will automatically happen. And that is exactly what I did here. So I purchased two failover routers. Now, what's really nice about these routers are they allow you to do QoS, whereas you can dial in your data, shape your data, so to speak. Also, you could do VPNs with it. You could do firewall. There's a lot of stuff. But today, we're only going to cover failover and how to set this up because it is life-changing, in my personal opinion. I don't even know that Starlink went down for 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute. I don't know. So this is really valuable. And once again, I picked up two different routers to see which one works the best so you don't have to do it. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna get into the setup of the first router, and that is the TP-Link. Now, you know I love TP-Link product because it's just affordable for most of you guys. A lot of people are like, oh, why don't you use Ubiquity or whatever? Well, yes, you know, that is an awesome system. They work out fantastic, but the majority of you out there don't wanna go and spend double for something that does the exact same thing, and that's why I always recommend TP-Link because they're that value type of proposition there. So we're gonna take a look at the TP link and also the UTT. Bear in mind, this information that I give you here should hold true from today. And if you're watching this video a year from now, you should be able to gleam enough information or knowledge from this video to be able to use it in your specific application. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it, but I'm gonna tell you why I do it. So when you look at your router configuration, you know why I did it and you can duplicate it on yours. That's my idea. Hopefully that comes across. So let me just start out by saying that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Pick them up. They're 100% free. Also, if you get anything out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just want to simply say thank you for all the work that I do here, I would appreciate it. You could click the thank you button down below or just simply become a member of the channel. That would be awesome. Now, let's get right into it. So to start out with, I originally used this. This is a switch and not a router. This is a TLSG108E. Now I talked to you guys about this about, let's say about a month or two ago. And what this is, is a managed switch that allowed me to take the Starlink information, that data, and shape shift it. It allows me to say this port gets priority over that port. And that port has even more priority over this port, so on and so forth. And the reason I did this is so that the Starlink service that we had, the data that we have available to us here on this computer, this is the main computer where I'm sitting, I want maximum priority. 
So anything else that's going on will be secondary to what I'm doing here. So if I'm going live with you or whatever, I get full access, let's say, to the full bandwidth of Starlink. Whereas the other ports coming out of here will receive, let's say, secondary or tertiary access. Mine, once again, is primary. I changed that out to the TP-Link router. Why? Well, because I wanted that failover so that I could connect multiple WANs, multiple internet connections into the unit. And if something goes south with the first one, the second one will automatically or technically automatically pick up where the last left off. The first one we're gonna set up is the TP-Link ER605, and then we're going to break that down and set up the UTT ER840G. Once again, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna show you not only the how, but the why behind the setup. So let's jump into it. So this is super easy to set up. Now there's a lot of features that we're not using here. The only thing that we're using is the failover. Now we can see a WAN and a WAN slash LAN one. This right here, let's call it WAN one and WAN two. This router provides five ports, but out of those five ports, three of them can be used as both LAN and WAN. So WAN being the internet connection coming in, we're only going to use two because we have Starlink and we have the AT&T Uverse. So, we're putting Starlink on WAN 1, or this top one up here, and then WAN slash LAN 1, that's going to get our AT&T. Now, this is very simple to set up. Like I said, that's all you need to do is, if you've never done it before, is go under Transmission. And then under Transmission, go to Load Balancing. From here, you wanna make sure that you enable Load Balancing. That will give you the different WAN possibilities. Then click on Save, and then Link Backup. Now this is where we're going to put a permission or a rule in here. Obviously I have one already, but you would normally click add. Now let me go and hit edit and you can see what this is all about. We have a primary WAN that's set up as WAN. We could also switch it if we wanted primary to be AT&T and our Starlink to be the secondary, we can do it that way also. And then we wanna make sure that we click on failover. Enable backup link when all primary WANs fail. Click enable and then hit OK. So like I said, this is super, super simple to do. And if we go over to network and then go down to WAN, you can see that this is set up already. The pink ones are where we're getting internet in and then the LANs here, we are not. Now, if we turned on this one over here that says WAN slash LAN2, then this one right here would end up being pink also and we would have to insert another type of internet provision. So for example, right now we have Starlink and we have AT&T. If I wanted to have Starlink, AT&T, and like Verizon 4G, I can stick that into this WAN. Then we would have a failover using three internet connections. But right now we're only using two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick test. We're gonna walk over to where this router is and do a couple of tests because I wanna find out how long does it take to move from WAN 1 to WAN 2, from Starlink over to Uverse, and then from Uverse back if there is an outage. But before we go over there and check that out, I want to go to status and then traffic. Now, this is where you would go to see if your setup is working. We can see that Starlink has received 1.7 gigabytes of data, whereas AT&T Uverse only seven megs. So we know that this is working because the majority, the lion's share is going into WAN 1, which is Starlink and WAN 2 here is AT&T. But there is data that's being received. So every once in a while, there is an outage where this router will fail over to AT&T to do whatever it needs to do and then come back over to Starlink. So let's go ahead and jump over to the router. We have one WAN, two WAN, and even a possibility of three WANs on this unit. But what we're doing today is we're going to use two WANs. We have the main Starlink, you can see that here. This is from the Starlink unit itself. Comes right in here to WAN 1, so that's our first connection. Our second connection here is WAN 2, or our AT&T line. And I'll get into how this is all connected in another video. But just understand that WAN 1 is Starlink and WAN 2 
is AT&T's U-verse. And the idea here is to get failover between the two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this cable right here, which would be WAN 1. And it should automatically fail over to WAN 2, which is AT&T. And we have this ping running right now. We're pinging 1.1.1.1 which is Cloudflare's DNS server. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna hit start and see how long it took for it to transfer over from WAN 1 to WAN 2. What is the downtime, basically, is what we're trying to determine. So, ready, here we go. Now we're going to find out how long it takes for WAN 1, or Starlink, to come back online. So the TP-Link did do a pretty good job. I didn't have to do anything. It automatically shifted from Starlink over to AT&T, and then back once it saw Starlink. And it took about 25 seconds to do so. 25 seconds is a bit for me too long. So what I did is I went and bought that UTT because I wanted to see if the UTT router would do it any quicker. When I was doing some reading about that router, it said that, you know, it was able to do it very quickly and people were saying that it was happening almost spontaneously. I'm like, well, 25 seconds and spontaneous is not the same. So let's go ahead and buy one, test it out, and then I can show you guys which one works better. So let's go ahead and get into the UTT. I'm gonna unplug the TP router right now and I'm gonna plug in the UTT version of the exact same or similar type of router and get into that setup. So let's go check that out. So I already set this up, but you don't need to go through the setup wizard. It's very, very easy. We're gonna just set this up as a failover and that is it. So let's go ahead and exit. And then we're gonna come down into network. What I like to do is go into LAN and change my default address to something else. It normally comes default as 192.168.1.1. I changed mine to 1.10. The reason being is because I have my TP link set as 192.168.0.10. So 0 0.10 will be the TP link and 1.10 will be this UTT. So we're going to set this up really quickly. There's not a lot to it. We're going to jump into WAN. Now in here, we can see WAN 1 and WAN 2. WAN 1 is my Starlink and WAN 2 is my AT&T U-verse. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit WAN 1. So we click on WAN 1 and as we can see, the interface is WAN 1 DHCP. That means that it's going to get its IP address from Starlink. That's fine. NAT mode, we're going to leave this alone. We don't need to go to pure routing. We'll leave that on NAT. And then as far as the line type, we set this up as primary because WAN 1 is our Starlink. So that setup is primary. So normally in minimum bandwidth, maximum and bandwidth ratios, there are numbers in there. I deleted those out and made them all zero because we don't need these ratios. We do not need these percentages because we're using this only as a failover. So when the primary goes down, it bumps over to the secondary. We go to interface mode. We'll go ahead and leave this as auto. We have a MAC address. Now primary DNS and secondary DNS. I set my primary here as Cloudflare's DNS server and my secondary as Google's DNS server. And that is it. Now we move over to WAN2. Nothing changes besides the line type. This line type, instead of primary, it is now backup. This way it understands whatever you plug into WAN2 on your router, that is going to be your secondary or your failover or your backup internet connection. We're gonna test this failover. This is very important to me because I want minimal downtime. Let's go over there and pull the plug and see what we get. All right, so this is the Starlink connection and this is the AT&T connection. We're gonna pull Starlink out and see how long it takes for AT&T to start. Ready? Three, two, one, go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and reset this. Let me hit stop and then reset. And we're gonna try it again, but go in the opposite direction. So now we're going to plug in our Starlink and see how long it takes for it to pick up where it left off. Ready? Three, two, one, go.
So as we can see, there is definitely a difference between the TP-Link and the UTT. The TP-Link was giving us anywhere from about 24 to 25 seconds to make the switch. Now I did do about five to 10 switches on each one of these routers and then took an average. I didn't show you all of them because it would take forever. Trust me, it's anywhere from about 24 to 25 seconds on the TP-Link router. On the UTT router, it's anywhere from about 10 seconds to 14 seconds to make that switch. So that's a big difference. You're looking at about twice the speed with the UTT router. So they both do the job equally as well because they are doing this automatically. So I don't need to know that, oh, Starlink went down and now I need to go and switch the network. I don't have to do any of that. By having both WANs plugged in, it means that I could just fall asleep behind the wheel, so to speak, and I just have internet and not know that one went down or the other one went down. Using the UTT router, it's literally 10 seconds is not a long time. So if you're watching a video, that's definitely the amount of cache time that's there. You won't even know that you went down. There is a lot of folks out there that are seeing or experiencing outages that are lasting 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Some people are having outages of 60 seconds or longer with Starlink. If you have this dual WAN setup where you have this failover, you won't even know that you went down. There is nothing that you need to do. You won't experience any outage. So in my personal opinion, I would go with the UTT router. Why? Well, there's multiple factors. Obviously, number one, it is faster. It is going to pick up and catch any type of outage faster, twice as fast as the TP-Link. That's number one. Number two that I didn't talk about that I really absolutely love about the UTT router is that it does have QoS. So that quality of service, the means of shaping your bandwidth is in there. Just like with that managed switch that I was talking to you about earlier, it has it built in. So it's almost like a 2-4, whereas the TP-Link does not have QoS built into it. So you would still need to go out of that TP-Link router into a managed switch if you want to data shape your Starlink service. My personal opinion, for the exact same price, under $100, grab one of those UTTs, you're going to be extremely happy with it. Also, if you don't have one of those, you're using a Ubiquiti or you're using just any other, maybe Netgear or whatever you're using, remember, the information that I'm showing you here is very general. You can go into very similar settings on your specific router and find those areas that you need to change and make those changes. Because once again, I told you the why and not just the how. Because when you go from router to router to router, or even maybe you're watching this video a year from now and you have a newer version of this specific UTT router that I have, you might have different menu areas or maybe different tabs. But once you get there, you're gonna know what you're doing and why you're doing it, all right? I'll probably in a future video teach you how to use QoS and other features of this router since I'm gonna be using it. And I will report back to you if it's still working good, if it's not, how fast is it, even faster or slower or whatever. I'll give you all of this information. Speaking about information, if you want more Starlink information from me, helpful how-tos, tricks, tips, commentary, whatever, I made a playlist specifically for Starlink. Go check that out after watching this video. You'll find a lot of really good information there. Once again, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed as of yet, click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all.